Thank you, Zyrene. A win there for Winter Fox, bringing them to four and four, tying up with Cloud9 actually now at four and four. And mm -hmm. I want to immediately touch on this level one, this kind of confusing, very interesting level one that Winter Fox pulled out here. In yeah. this game. Well, first of all, I'm glad to finally see some variance in these level ones, yes. especially from the teams that are not at the top of the ladder, because this is the point in the game where you have the least information available. You're only working with these 60 second trinket wards. So there are so many options for you. And really, it just depends on how risk leveling or risk averse a team is. There are yeah. so many different things that you can go for. This is one of them. And it's actually a fairly old strategy, right? Just go with the four man very quick dive. But um, I'm happy to see Winter Fox actually going for that. I am too, and it's always just been a point of will teams prepare their level ones. We've seen teams will do the same level one multiple times, and a team will sort of counterpick it. They'll hide in a random brush you have no purpose being in because they expect the same jungle invade game after game after game. We've seen it a couple times this season. There's a couple in LCK. Uh, C9 themselves did a heavily researched one in game one against Samsung Blue at the World Championship and won the game because of that. They got two kills and, and snowballed the game. I do want to keep, as you're saying, see these teams, research level ones, and predict their opponent's patterns. Well, that begs the question then, are these level ones gimmicks? Are they, no, are they a one-time no. thing? Is this something no. now that every team checks for? They go into the bot lane, they check that bush, and no. say, okay, we're not going to get dove? Again, it's, it's the preparation that goes into it. All you can get is a better percentage of having success, and it just depends on your preparation, right? Maokai, 80% of the time, he starts at Wraith Camp. Mm-hmm. We have not seen anybody send multiple people to try and kill a Maokai while he's doing a Wraith Camp or a Scion or something right. like that. Yeah. This one was good, and I like how they denied their enemies as much information as possible. They only showed the AD carry in the bottom lane. So Cloud9, like I said, they're working with the least information at this point in the game, and you know, everybody pops out. There's not much that Boss could do. Maybe he could have saved his flash till her aggro was on him, but I like the play from Winter Fox. Just turned out... They handled the aftermath of it very poorly. <laughs> yeah. Cloud9 once again showing their veteran status and getting a giant uh, experience lead, which really punished Avalon. Yeah, basically these guys stuck around in the lane, right? Top laner gets to go do whatever he wants for a long time, and you know, pretty bad misplays there. So, okay, level one ended up being a bit of a wash here. We'll move on to the rest of the game, though. What I thought was really interesting was... So Cloud9, I think they picked in a good composition... The problem to me is they, they sort of played it wrong as you go farther into the mid game. The big reasons are basically threefold. So number one, they aimed an engage support ban at Glebe. They got rid of Annie, but they gave him Leona, which is going to fulfill the same purpose with one exception in that Janna is actually good against Leona because you can stuff the Zenith Blade in. It's a good laning matchup. And so they're kind of preparing themselves for this matchup, but they don't play that out. They're not actually disengaging team fights really as Cloud9. The way their comp plays out, you've got a caster who can split push, and they know he's going to match into Ari, and that's going to be a 1v1 you can win. In fact, the laning phase went fine, and then later on in the game, Cast is going to do great things. But Cena never played to this advantage. They never played to the disengage support. They never played to the split push and cast it in. They just grouped up and team fought and engaged as Janna. The power of Janna is picking your engages. You don't pick 5v5 against the 5v5 team, though. Well, I mean, that's a very good point. We do have a replay, though, of a team fight that very early on went in the favor of Cloud9. So we're going to pull that up on your screen. We're 18 minutes or so into the game. Um, Kobe, I want you to just kind of walk us through this one real quick. So, sadly enough, actually, this replay is a pretty good example of, you know, how many mistakes were made in team fights this game by mm -hmm. actually both teams. This time around, it is Winter Fox making the majority of the mistakes, so they come out on the losing end. Just keep track of all the ultimates, uh, all the R buttons here from Winter Fox. Uh, Graves, actually, is everybody's going to dodge his ultimate. Uh, from Altec here as high flashes. Oh, I guess balls take balls the brunt of it. it. Yeah. But then again, Avalon, as they mentioned, he used his ultimate on Lemonation, and those are the two. Those are two fairly big ones from Winter Fox. Mm. And, you know, just the the last tick of the ignite pulling that one off there didn't really matter that high. Had so much gold in his inventory or whatever. If you don't hit your abilities, right. And so. Oh, sorry, what, the, what that points to, right, is the fact that we all kind of said, oh, this is Cloud9's game, right? Like, you win a game, you win a team fight that early with, you know, these ramping, ramping uh, champs like Cassidy and Maokai. If t Cloud9 plays the way that they normally do, right. they're going to take this game. Now, to return to your point, Freak, we watch that not happen. For right. some reason, which is that they are well, playing the, out the, the matchup incorrectly against a team fighting team. The reason is they cleaned up their team fight, right? If yeah. it gives Cloud9 false confidence, if they are like, oh, this uh, they use their Lissandra ultimate on our support and they miss their a, a large portion of their damage. They showed up late. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Then then Cloud9 gets aggressive. Say, oh, okay, I guess we're winning five v fives. Then it's 
easier to just team fight than to split push and risk getting caught out by Lissandra engages. So, okay, take the easier way out. Well, it turns out that's actually a lower percentage play because those consistent team fights are actually r routinely losing engagements. All right, so we have another replay, mm -hmm. which is showing the opposite here. Right. We're going to go about uh, 29 minutes into the game, 3-0 for Winter Fox. They get the Baron off of this as well. And at this point, this is, this is you know, team fight two, three, where it's like, right. Cloud9, what are you doing? Why are you taking these team fights one after the other? Yeah, the game's fairly close. There's a couple of, like, mechanical misplays that aren't too big, but it's the pure fact that you're choosing to fight a 5v5 against a team with a lot of AoE lockdown. Janna's not great at the actual engaged 5v5. She's good at, again, picking her fights. So roll the clip out. Ball's going to go in and glebe. They think they're winning this fight, but the problem is all of Winter Fox are actually here. So it's a bunch of ways to damage the support. Ball's actually, despite also being a tank, gets bursted out because there's more damage on that lineup, and it's just, at this point, cleanup. Lemon kind of this is a half disengage, right? Barely does anything as a Janna, whereas Glebe, like, tanked 400 damage and, you know, stunned three people. Like, wow, what a, what a better team fighting support. <laughs> Everyone's surprised. <laughs> Glebe was such a hero this game because yeah. we don't actually have that clip, but the one where they turn around, he flashes for the stun. The flash Completely cube. changes the entire game. So Glebe definitely deserves uh, the, his longtime, you know, support position right here while they're while yep. they have imagine over in Korea but I also want to point out in that replay hi uh, this Cassidy that got ahead really early wasn't really punished in lane phase and had a lot of money as we keep on going over mm -hmm. he got off almost nothing in that team fight uh, yep. jumping right into the solar flare then having to Zanya's immediately and it not didn't really affect much and that's just the unfortunate thing here is uh, when you have a champion composition like this with a Cassidy with a Janna you are picking your fights like these aren't big team fighting threats, but they're guys that are going to pick someone off immediately, and that just never got to happen for Cloud9. A bit messy of a game, at least to begin with, but then Winter Fox pulling it together, playing out their composition correctly, and getting their win. Now, we've got more NALCS action coming your way. Up next, it's Team Impulse versus Coast, so don't go anywhere. We're teeing up our first match today, Winter Fox versus Cloud9. Meteos gets the flash cue on. That's going to be the lockup as well. The ignite is ticking. Will it burn? Maybe Whoa, it will. The play. <laughs> he they tries to make it. Oh, they do it. Will they take down balls as well? Lush out, Lush out. Uh, cast it in, cast it in, cast it in. Cast it in, cast it in, cast it in. Lush out, Lush out, Lush out, Lush out. Lucian, chip point, nice! Right. Solar Flare locks down both balls in Meteos, high to the back line. Cobalter now is actually very low. Does he decide to go in? But he retreats, still getting the kill onto high. Winter Fox come out, huge, and take down Cloud9.